What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the other side of the firewall podcast. We talk about the latest and greatest cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shannon Tynes. What's up? What's up? What's going on? So welcome to Tuesday's episode. Please like, share, subscribe. So we're seeing a lot of good traffic. We greatly appreciate you listening to the podcast. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button to whatever, however you listen to us. Subscribe to that <laughs> and then like and share our content. Um, so Monday, Tuesday, our topics, Wednesday, discussion, Thursdays, Ask Us SP. Uh, that one should be Michael Ware. So uh, Mike Ware is a friend of the show. He's never been on Ask Us SP before, though. So you're going to learn about his background, uh, cybersecurity origin story, and uh, what he does um as well as uh what he used to do in the military so all the good <laughs> and then uh friday everything else movies books games all that good stuff so without further ado i'll give it to shannon all right everybody this article actually comes from kwtx.com uh which is a which is a uh site in texas actually um this one was written by jasmine lots and the title of this one is Central Texan wins 170K national cybersecurity grant, plans to use funding to better serve tech users. So this was interesting, right? So they had this grant um, that they awarded to this assistant professor. She's a Texas A&M Central Texas assistant professor, Dr. Lavanya Aluri. Um, she won the National Science Foundation grant for cybersecurity research and plans to use the funding to uh, help use technology properly here, right? What she talked about, and it's something that we've we've brought up on this show before, is people not knowing how that is being used, right? Um, so she's talking about uh, people share data all the time, right? And when, and they don't know the terms and conditions of collection data, right? Now, if you're in the, it would be different, right? Because they do a very good job of letting you know how your data is being used. But um, for here in the states, so much, right? So she says uh, she's got a decade of experience in IT. And she says it's a worldwide issue, um, but what she, what she, what the idea was that she pitched that got her this one hundred seventy thousand dollar grant was uh, creating an app that stores federal and state laws that regard data privacy and putting it in one place and doing a simple version, right, of of terms and conditions as well as privacy policies, right. So we know this, we, we know that these are things, but these are the things we just hit accept on and just keep moving on, right. We just like I, I don't care take whatever you want, right? And then get upset when we find out the data is being used in a way that we don't like. Well, we we we, we confirm that choice, right? But what she's trying to do, uh, she's going to look into privacy policies of all these companies um, that are out there, uh, you know, look into these EULAs and see what's in those. Um, and, and what she's going to do is she's just going to put them, like, like I said, she's going to simplify it and put them all in one place, right? And this is a good thing, right? Because people just don't, they don't pay attention to these types of things that that been up for, right? Like even myself knowing what's going on, like it got to a point even with me where I was like, you know, I would scan down, scan down and look. And I'm like, man, 31 paragraphs. Like, do I really want to read them all? Maybe not today. <laughs> or you tell yourself, I'll go back and look at them, right? Because they have to make them available to you. So you can see them, you know, even after you've accepted and, and, and go back and look and verify. But uh, even me, like knowing what, what can be in some of these, I'm like, mm, I don't know. But this is what she plans to do with that money. Though. So and, and it's a good thing. Because like I said, people don't people don't care. They just want to to the product. Right. They want to use the product. They want to they want to upload their photos for families to see into that nature. Right. Put their opinions out there on on uh, Ryan. You're going to say Twitter. I'm going to say X. But, you know, <laughs> Never say, I've never seen another one. So it's, been, it's been long enough now, man. It's been long enough now. You never gotta say X. The artist formerly known as Twitter. But yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a cool thing he's doing here, right? Like, I, 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 it's, I appreciate it because I know how it is. But, but even then, you still have to deal with the actor of this, right? People may still, even if you make it available to them, you still have to go to it, right? Like you're not, if you make it, if you make it to where it's something that pops up automatically, right? Even if they're using your app, they're probably still going to read it, right? Eventually, they're going to get to a point because in this day and age, everything you sign up for has something you have to read and acknowledge, right? You have to agree to it. So at a certain point, you're going to still be in that same mindset. Like, I, I like I like the fact that she's trying to simplify it, but and I hope it works out. I really do. I 100% hope it works out. But you still have the human factor of people that are just going to be like, nah, I, I, I get it. You know what I mean? Um, even subscribing to the app, like it's, it's, it's that new, it's what do you call it? The new toy effect. You know what I mean? Like the shiny thing effect. Like at first mm -hmm. you're like, oh yeah, this is going to be great. You know what I mean? And then eventually 
again, because everything end up for it, right? From your from your banking to your entertainment purposes, all of that stuff, you know, yeah, paying off credit card bills, whatever it may be, everything is online and you're going to run into this where you got some type of, uh, uh, whether it be a EULA or, or a, a, a terms and agreements you got to sign, um, human factor is going to be the big thing here. And hopefully we, hopefully we all change our stance on this, right? Because like I said, even me knowing what's buried in some of these documents, I still am just like, ah. 30 some odd paragraphs is too much except <laughs> you know what I mean but... well I would like people to like share and subscribe got to put it out there <laughs> yeah, please subscribe to the podcast if you have not on your platform of choice because we're everywhere now um, so here's the thing I, I think this is uh, I think this is good I think that it's, it's good that she was awarded the grant to uh, to, to make this happen um, I, I'm of the same mindset that, that you are that people will just scroll anyway and i think the insult to injury is when you have one of those where you have to scroll and it forces you to actually scroll before you insult, uh accept uh because they're like we we know you're not going to read this but now we, we're going to make sure that your hands are tied like not only did you acknowledge but you had to scroll so you interacted with us to not read it anyway um just so you hit accept with that being said though i i I hope for a future where there's some kind of policy or regulation where you can opt in and opt out, just like right now with cookies, like depending on if that company uh, has some kind of dealings in the EU, you get to reject all button on cookies right there on the front of the screen. Oh, chef's kiss. <laughs> I don't have to dig through the menu. I can just click reject all. That's the best thing ever. Um, but in the day, if you want to access their site, you have to accept their terms and conditions. There's nothing you can do about it. And and like you said, Shannon, the world is more connected than ever before. You can't do it. It used to be a time where the online version was a convenient option. Now, sometimes the online version is the only option. There is no uh, physical location or hard copy to be sent. So you have no choice but to agree to their terms. But it would be nice to have someone who has broken it down to you in case you do want to reference it in the future. Say, well, what did I what did I sign up for? Because I had no choice. I had to pay a bill, or I had to access my bank, or um, I had to, you know, I wanted to go to amusement park. That's the only way to to get tickets. Whatever yeah. it may be, um, it would be nice to be able to to go back and and have something that breaks it down to you instead of thirty one paragraphs. It's three paragraphs of of plain English, right? Is is the hopes? So it's it's good to see, especially. Uh, uh, this month is Women's History Month, and the eighth was International Women's Day. So that's uh, a very timely article popped up. So that's great. Hopefully, more of those will, will pop up throughout the month um, as well that we can we can cover. But good to see. I'm glad that she she was awarded this money. That she's going to actually try to make change. Uh, Come out of Texas. Texas does set the precedent for not only uh, education because Texas is so big. They, they set the tone for books and what's written in those books. Uh, but now they're starting to have their own Fed ramp and their own CMMC. So you'll see like uh, Texas ramp <laughs> is a is a thing. Right? So they have a lot of sway. Um, so if, if this does become a thing and it comes out of Texas, then it'll be pushed to other states as well. So she's in the right place to uh, to make this happen. So granted $170,000 is a lot of money, but for, for a good implementation, is, it seemed like it more, right? But, but she's trying to do the best of what she got, right? Like that she applied for it. That was the amount, but I would like to see a high number on that, right. To try to get a better implementation. Cause just to, just to set this, I'm curious, right? Like if you're going to put everything in one place, like, are you going to have to hire lawyers to take the lawyerese out of this, to make it simple for the average American to, to read? Like, is that going to cost, right? Cause lawyers by the hour, that ain't cheap. You know what I'm saying? So. Very true. That's very true. That makes you get old. Like, she might be implementing chat GPT or some other. <laughs> So that that could do it too. I saw a prompt the other day. Somebody wanted to send a, a, a cease and desist, but they they couldn't afford a lawyer. So they told ChatGPT, "Like you are a lawyer, I need you to send a, a letter with, with these parameters." And it, it spit it out like it had passed the bar. So mm. It's, mm. it's crazy out there. Um, so if she can implement kind of AI solution, maybe that will help as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and stretch her dollar much further um, in that regard. So we'll see. We'll see what the future holds. I'm sure we'll be talking about this again in uh, less than a year as uh, political season is about to hit us in the face. 
Yeah. And then uh, money will start rolling it again for the end of the fiscal year. So maybe this is just a beta for her. She takes the money. She shows that, hey, this is, uh, you know, what I could do with what you gave me. If you add another zero to that, this is what I could do for you in the future. And it blows up from there. So we, we will see. But definitely continue to tune in throughout the week. So Monday, Tuesday are topics. Wednesday, discussion. Thursdays, Ask Us SP. I'll have on Mike Ware. And then Fridays, everything else. Movies, books, games, all that good stuff. So hit up all the websites that go by our name. You can find us at the other side of the firewall, the other side of the FW, or Ask Us SP. You can find me uh, on several different platforms at RyRy Security Guy. That's R-Y-R-Y Security Guy. You can find me on Threads, uh, Clubhouse. Uh, Twitter, I, I almost said X, <laughs> and LinkedIn, most importantly, uh, where I write a bunch of articles and all that good stuff. Each episode gets its own article during the week. Uh, and then uh, you can find Chris at Chris Abacon or Chris A. Bacon on LinkedIn. Stay safe, stay secure. <laughs>